Welcome to the television audience. We're a little bit late uh, getting on. We had some technical issues, but we are now live with our Board of Selectmen's meeting, and this is Monday, December 3rd, 2018, and we're just in the middle of our first topic, meeting with the Cub Scouts, who have some questions for us. Yep. And um, first, we wanted to know about our duties as citizens, yep. and then Beckett is up with question number two. And, and I will say, too, your, your duty as a citizen, I think, changes as you, um, as okay. you get older. Because I think um, it's important, kind of like when you're at home and you're helping around the house, like to keep the whole house running, especially if you're like both your parents work, you know, it, it's important for everybody to pitch in to make everything work. And that's kind of what it's like being a citizen in town, because the more people pitch in, the easier it is for everybody else and the more we can make things work better. And, and like um, Scott was saying too, um, we couldn't do our job without the help of lots of other people who volunteer and help out. And like Scott would have been a volunteer on the, um, the finance committee. I was on the um, conservation committee before. And most people are, they usually do something else before they do this. Exactly right. Yeah. So could, Mr. Pierce, what I think I hear you saying is the town is your literal home. It's where your address is. But treat the home, your home, your town, like it's literally where you live. So if the sidewalks have trash on them, pick them up. Yep. If you see something happening that you can fix or participate in to make it better, then do that that's, as yep. a part of it being a good citizen. Yeah, that's true. Yep. And follow up with what the chair had to say earlier, um, you know, the question about rights as well as duties, there's an inherent tension between rights and duties. One can happen without the other. Right, you you That's can't true. you can't say that or claim to have the right for freedom of expression or freedom of religion or those kinds of freedoms without the duty to recognize that that's everyone's right. That cuts both ways. It does. It sure does. Yeah, and that's how people get along best. Exactly right. Yep. Yeah. So Beckett, you want to ask? Um, what is your role in the community? Hmm. It, well, it, like in which way, other than like, um, like the fact that we're selectmen? Sure, but I'm not sure that these young people know exactly what selectmen do. Sure. So, well, let me ask them. What do you guys think a selectman does? That's a good question, yeah. Um, I think they like... <laughs> I like that answer. Yeah. They are like in charge of like, maybe like... They keep things running, mm -hmm. or, yeah. like make sure that everything is like, makes it look nice and clean, like pick up, like you said, mm -hmm. like you, if you see trash on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. you should pick it up. Yep. So that sort of like, you guys try to like make it, like make people like help out in your community. Yeah, what do you Point. think, Caitlin? I think maybe like to select decisions. Oh, select decisions. I like the use of that word. Yes, I like that. And Henry? Essentially select town rules and laws. Yeah. That's yeah. what works in our town. Well, I, I know who's got a, who can probably give you a really good description about what where the term select board member came from. Um, you're kind of right, although the person who really keeps things running every day is right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's kind of like a company in that, like the select board is sort of like the executives of a company, of a company and, and we get to make the decisions based on a lot of stuff that goes on, but mm -hmm. a lot of other people really keep things running every day. Because we're, we're a small town, so we can't um, be here full time, mm -hmm. so we all work like our you know, regular other jobs during the day, and then we do this in all of our free time. Sure. Right, so. <laughs> if I could, yeah. Mr. Chair, one, right. one, of the, one of the things that is um, um, the largest misnomer about being a member of the Board of Selectmen is that it's an, it's an executive role and you can simply make a rule, or you can, <laughs> you, you can absolutely not do that. So our, the way that the town is structured the town, of course, has a charter. The town operates in what's called an open town meeting form of government. That means anybody who's a registered voter and resident can go to town meeting and they have uh, the same exact vote that everyone else in that room does. Yeah. So what he's saying, you guys, is we have something called town meeting. Mm -hmm. The select board brings up ideas, yep. and then they bring their idea to, idea to the town meeting, and then the people who decide 
are the people in the town. Yep. So if you come to a town meeting, then you get to decide. And only if you come to the up. town meeting. If you don't, right. you don't get to decide. Exactly. And Henry, you have a question? I just wanted to say that sort of the way you're describing this go the town government makes it sound sort of like the U.S. government in the respect mm. where the, where the um, sure. Congress comes up with ideas for the laws mm -hmm. and then Point. the President can either pass them or veto them. And if he vetoes them, Congress can override the veto by voting again. And if they win the vote, they can yeah. override it and pass it. Right, Henry? Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very analogous to that. <laughs> Very analogous to that. Again, recommendations. You you could, if you're eligible to vote, you could put a, a, a citizen's request on the town meeting warrant. And as it being a citizen's request, we as the Board of Selectmen can't reject that. It simply is a citizen's request. It has to go forward, and the town meeting gets to vote on it. So, you know, being, being the selectman is not um, an all an all. Uh, powerful position, but it's more like an all corralling of the best information to bring forward to the town. Yeah. So, Kaylin, you have another one. Okay. Uh, what is the energy use in our town? How does our town plan to conserve energy? Ooh, that's a good one. You can run with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have actually been doing a whole lot lately to um, conserve energy. We've been working probably for whew, almost since I've been on the board on different energy conservation okay, plans. Anyway. Mm. Yep. Um, so we start with everything from the controls for the heating systems and, and um, we're replacing those to like, automate a lot of those things. Um, and right now we're in the middle of a big thing, to, a project to change all of the, the street lights. We just bought those, and we're converting them from the older style to LED ones, so they'll save, a, I don't know, what's the efficiency like on that? Like $12,000 worth annually. Yeah, so so that saves a lot of money on, um, and it'll save money on maintenance, too. So the, the LEDs use a lot less electricity, and we're constantly looking for ways to save money on fuel and efficiencies and things like that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A couple of simple things. If you have a follow-up, you can ask. Yeah, go ahead. We have so, a solar panel mm -hmm. farm at our school. Yep. Mm -hmm. We like do that more in other places. What well, we have tried. Um, it's it's kind of a couple. We were trying because we put the one in the school, mm -hmm. and that helps to cover the energy that the town uses. And we did try to put one. You know, that reminds public me too over at the yeah. public, we have to talk about that, mm -hmm. over at the public safety complex. So we tried to put one in there, but the, for a lot of reasons that one fell through. Um, but, w but it is not dead yet. <laughs> so the original yeah. intent with those solar panels <clears throat> was to generate enough electricity in the course of a year to cover the amount that the town departments, office buildings, treatment plant, use so we wanted to be effectively net zero yep. for production to consumption mm -hmm. um, for a couple of engineering reasons we couldn't quite get there that's that's one story what's lost maybe in kind of the day-to-day -day is that in the last decade through a series of uh, grant rounds through a series of initiatives at town meeting and uh, with some good engineering help and a really active town administrator chasing down grants. We participate in something called the Green Communities Group in this, the town, and we have a very active in-town energy committee who is very active. So in the last nearly decade, not quite the decade, mm -hmm. nearly a decade, we've actually taken our energy consumption and not added any buildings, not taken any way any buildings, yep. but through efficiency measures, gotten our energy consumption down by a little over 20%. Just about 24 percent, actually. Yeah. And, and that's fantastic. and that happens kind of like one quiet meeting at a time. Right. Yeah. It's just like here it comes. Right. Yeah. So you, there's an energy committee. Correct. Yes, and they're all volunteers. And they, do a, they do a great job. Yeah. Yeah. A volunteer energy committee. How many people are on that committee? Four, four, four or five. Four. Yeah. And are there open seats on that committee? Anybody can go. So when a committee is formed, actually, a charge is usually created by the uh, board. 
and okay. the board sets a sets a cap of number of participants. Okay. And and in an advisory committee where a vote's not necessarily uh, a big deal, you know, you, an even number is fine. An odd number is better. Yeah. So, so you can you can declare a majority. I don't know if there's any open seats on it right now, but we'll post anything on the web certainly. Great point. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Good questions, and Henry, I think we're last with you. Are there any energy problems in our community? If so, what do you think caused them? Oh. Mm, really. So with respect to energy problem, access to some kinds of energy, um, access to some kinds of energy is a challenge. Um, natural gas. Natural right. gas yep. being one. Right. Uh, the ability to tie more active um, green energy sources uh, because of the utility requirements is a, is a bit of a problem. Um, and I say a problem not that it's chronic, it acts like a bottleneck. Yeah. So if you, if you could, you see in other areas larger solar arrays going in and there's some discussion about wind and wind towers and those kinds of things. Um, it's always what you connect to. Remember the, the community in the town of Sunderland, uh, there's a lot of those energy methods, energy um, distributions that run through the town to serve other towns. Right. And those are all by private uh, and public companies. So it's not like the government, other than uh, leaving a right, leasing a right away, can actually say, okay, you're gonna take, Henry, you're getting 200,000 solar panels in your yard, gosh diddly. Well, <laughs> well you, you can't, because you can't connect it to anything. But those kinds of bottlenecks are always under review, back to that public process. That public process, whether it's here or at the state level or at the federal level. That's a good question, though. Well, actually, one of the energy problems we actually have and we're working on is how to get rid of all the poop out of the, out of the treatment plant. <laughs> that's a very yep. good question, actually, yep. because I used to be on the Board of Selectmen in Rutland. Sure. Oh, you know you yeah. yeah. And our wastewater treatment flows underneath a number of towns uh -huh. and into a treatment plant. We have to pay all of the towns yep. for all of the... The pass through, so our, so, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. so our water, our discharge permit is fine. No issue with that. Clarity, right. cleanliness, all that's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sludge, uh -huh. that's a problem. Yeah. Yes, it is. What do you do? So it's our sludge actually gets trucked to Fitchburg, or no? Now uh -huh. it's now it's it's um, Blackstone, right? And and it gets <laughs> and it gets incinerated. <coughs> so there's a regional group coming out of Greenfield that's looking at a digestion system and yep. the digestion for energy. There is a methane digester yep. in Rutland as yep. well, yep. and um, it's on a privately owned yep. um, farm yep. um, with somebody I've known all my life. Sure. Which is, but it's a wonderful way to um, get energy from something that's right. going to be there anyways. Right. So when you talk about energy, it's not necessarily lines on poles or pipes in the ground. It's how much do you consume, which I think the town does a very good job of managing and having targets. Uh, our target continues to be 5% reduction per year. Yeah. And okay. then what do we do with other things like yeah. sewage treatment plant? Right, right. I like it. Yeah. Very good answer. Brilliant. Thanks so much. <laughs> um, do you guys have any other questions? Hmm. Um. And do you have questions for the scouts? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to make a bridge out of cake <laughs> without eating it, would that be a great project or what? Well, no, well, you, I just yeah. eat it all. And you could, you could have a suspension bridge, you could tell you're going to... Well, depending on, <laughs> yeah. you could just be like, what sort of cake would it be, a soft velvet cake? Soft velvet cake, you had to right. be... Like Ice cream cake, that would hold it See? More. See? That probably have to be rather <laughs> a... True. If it's it wouldn't get soggy. It wouldn't get soggy in the water. Pound cake is dirty. Okay, you can ask. Um, do you ever yes. get nervous while being on TV? I'll actually let Sherry answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But you do. You get used to it. You do. Yeah. I remember the first time when I sat here and it was like, hmm. You know, you. You do get a little nervous. It, it does. In some ways, it 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 is the perfect medium for transparency. It is. It's really, very really simple. Everything that's on the camera is captured by the camera. It's like no taking it back. That said, 
Uh, it does become just part of the background. So after a little while, you do get used to it. And frankly, we haven't been caught swearing much, and that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Henry, um, how can students learn to use the selectmen? There's no term limits for a selectmen. So it's right. kind of like really, well, most, because the, like the president has a term limit of two terms. Some places impose term limits, but most positions don't have them usually. Town level. Yeah. Yeah. Stop, like, stop doing it. We, we ever stop doing it? Yeah. Yeah, at some point, because I mean, we need to, scissors exactly. Scissors. It's like, <laughs> and, and at some point, you know, it all depends on what's going on in each person's life. But eventually, too, you know, we want to turn it over to some new folks and get some fresh ideas. And then it, it's good for everybody to participate. So, yeah. You don't. If, I could, if I could just follow up with that question, you know, it's, it's a representative vote. So anybody who wants to run certainly is welcome to run. And at some point, every elected official's time is, is, is up, whether it's either out of time or they're out of energy or the last thing you want to do is be in this role and be bored. That's very true. Yeah, I can't imagine being <laughs> bored. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't but. happened yet, <laughs> but you don't, want to, you don't want to call this job in, I guess, maybe is a better way to put it. Right. right. There's a lot of work involved. There's a lot of work. Like what you see here is just a tiny part of it because we're on all sorts of other committees. Right. We're sewer commissioners right. and mm -hmm. all sorts of other roles. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, we'll, like work our way down. Instead of a, a bridge of cake, could it be a bridge of Twixes? Not a bad idea. You could use you could use Twixes as suspension right. or as supports right. and then cake. I like this. Railings? Railings? Sugar bridge. The structural <laughs> Twix. <laughs> Sugar bridge. <laughs> yes. Um, in the future, are there gonna be ever be like more? Is there gonna be ever more space for like, if like, more buildings anywhere? With respect to Sunderland. Yeah. Okay. What kind of buildings do you mean? Like, Houses for people yeah, live in, yeah. or town buildings? Both. I don't know. Okay. That's a good question. talking about open space and API. Yeah, yeah we, there's, <clears throat> there's definitely more space to, to build things. Um, but some of the space in town we have in what's called, and we don't have any maps right up here that show it, but it's what's called APR land. So some of the farmland, especially along the river, mm -hmm. is what's called protected farmland. So it basically gets protected. It, You'd have, well, you'd, the state legislature and the whole town would have to vote to get it out. So it's very difficult to unprotect it. Um, and that really helps to protect the town. So we try to balance it out so that we have some of the more important pieces of land, especially the farmland along the river, protected. And then we have other areas that you know we allow to have like commercial development, more houses and things like that um, developed. So there's definitely room for more. Right. Why do you guys think the land near the river is protected? <clears throat> Why do you think, Henry? Because the land near the river, if it say could be turned into a building, one, it could pollute the water. If, 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 and two, the farmland on the water is very precious because of the fact that farmland that's near the water is usually pretty rich soil. Mm -hmm. yep. So that would be fairly good farmland for farming. Right, and once you build on it, generally it's very hard to reverse it and turn it back into farmland. Yeah. So. And it will set precedent. Yep. Right. I would, I would say before we get to the next question that all of the um, um, scenes that you see around Sunderland as you drive around, you go to school, ride the bus, etc., ride your bikes, etc., they're set by zoning and planning which again are, are elected and volunteer boards. And then those rules, again, are voted by town meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to bear in mind, it's a full-on process. What you're experiencing tomorrow morning waiting for the bus is the result of generations worth of work long before us yep. to establish this kind of sea touch feel mm -hmm. that you know is Sunderland. Yeah. So when the selectmen are working, what they do is they consider different ideas that will affect the town for sometimes the next 10 years, but sometimes the next 25, sure. 50, or 100 years. Right. So right. it's just not what's going to happen next week or next year, but for a very long time. Right. A lot of the stuff that we do, right, has long, it takes a long time to get something 
for some projects just take a long time. So. Who is next? Which one of you is next? That one. Good. Um, okay. um, and like the holidays, are there going to any be like decorations like outside? Like <laughs> no, it's not something that we do, but I'm sure we have a rec committee that can get involved in <laughs> discussing that. We do, we do we do flags for Memorial Day and for the Fourth of July, and yeah. there's an, an awful lot that goes on right over here at the Veterans Memorial. Yeah. But as it's certainly in my tenure, we haven't decorated the streets per se. Right, because we don't really have we don't have a light poles to put them on. Right. Yeah. yeah, like Christmas that's one of mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Yeah, Um, we were up for the. I was there. Uh, I was here for the library. Yeah, and I was here for the public safety complex. Um, and we have rebuilt uh, parts of the elementary school in my tenure as well. The playground was that. Yeah. I was rebuilt the. Yes. We re actually rebuilt the playground twice. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> I worked on the other one right. and then the new one on the yep. back, yeah. But you know, these, these buildings uh, and roads and bridges and our rolling equipment, fire trucks, those are, those are all in a category um, called uh, assets. The town knows what those, what those pieces of equipment and infrastructure are and they're always on our radar screen. We have, we have the, we, our budget season is about to begin and, yep. and it's, it's Capital planning is a big part of it. Yep. Um, in Rutland, we had a capital improvement committee. Same. Same thing. Yep. Track of that. Yep. Same. Yeah. All, we, all we do is get the recommendations, yeah. discuss with the with the department heads. It's vetted, it, and you can only you right. can only afford what you can afford. Yeah. But there are those priorities. That's that. And yeah. you guys go to the elementary school, right? Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. You go to Conway. Okay. Conway. Wow. You, you go. Okay. Good. <laughs> so. Like you talk, I wasn't around on the select board. I was in town as a citizen when the, the library yep. and a few other things were yep. built. Um, but me and I about like three or four other people did most of the work on you know the pavilion that's out back. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we yeah. built that. Yep. And I remember being on the top of that and at about like 100 degrees. It was a <laughs> sweltering summer. So there was a small handful of us that did that. So mm -hmm. there was more like volunteer work. That's great. I do want to. I want to tell you three one more thing, okay? Because I could talk to these gentlemen all yeah. long about <laughs> yeah. this because this is fascinating. But there are other people. We on do have some other stuff, yeah. yeah. And so what I this will be the lightning round. That's right. right. So <laughs> your questions have to be one more each, and then we're going to excuse ourselves so the other people that are in this room can get to their agendas, okay? And they can finish theirs, okay? Nice. Gentlemen, is that all right? One more That's each. Right, yeah. Okay. Okay, um, follow up with the pavilion. Um, we, uh, I think it was last year we were like talking about putting like water filter, filters mm. for the garden on top of it, and mm. we had it for the garden. Mm -hmm. yep. And um, were you like any part of that? The of the water filter part? Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't have anything to do with the water filter. Through the part. facilities and then the school committee. Yeah. So before great. anything came to us. Yep. Yep. of using say biodegradable cloth for say fourth of july or labor day or memorial like flags sure energy committees all over that we also have an agricultural committee that actually agricultural committee worked closely with the solid waste district and got a pilot program and now it's a fully funded program to reclaim agricultural plastic and it's amazing. You think about what kind of material goes down to incubate for seeds early on. Well, now in our area, that plastic gets pulled back up and recycled. So it's a big deal. Yeah. Good question, though. And Beckett, yeah. last question. Um, have the bridge ever had a been rebuilt? Yep, oh, got wiped yes. out. Yep. Really? Yep. Flood, big trees, and a whole other bridge from Montague came down and wiped yeah. it right out. The road used to be right here. The bridge right here, the school street, uh -huh. is where the bridge used to be. Oh. And they built the Sunderland Bridge after that bridge got wiped out. Flood Flooded from an ice dam, right? Flood, wait, flood wait, of 38. Wait, how is there, like, no water here? How is there, yeah. Is the bridge is right, wait, oh. Yeah, so there was, there was an old wooden covered bridge just north of this bridge. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
right where this street goes across, you'll see another one on the other side, and that bridge got wiped out by a bridge from Montague during a flood. So just that, came down yeah. on an entire bridge from Montague, came yep. down the river, smashed, into, smashed our into our bridge and wiped it out. Mm -hmm. Wait, what happened? Wait, so when did you guys have to make that one? This one here? After the, after the 38 flood. Yeah. 1938. Yeah. It was March of this. There's actually a, a FCAT, it has, I'm sure, uh, if you go to FCAT.TV, you can see that from 1938 flood, GBH actually plays it again as well. Thing, yeah. On YouTube. On YouTube it's as, it's as YouTube, well. Yeah. And there's actually pictures, black and, black mm -hmm. and white video footage of the bridge, not this one, the one in Montague, kind of collapsing and, and here it comes. And there are citizens on River Road up here in Falls Road who, who were alive and saw it going down the river and then bam, goodbye Sunderland Bridge. Oh. So it's, it's worth checking out on YouTube. It's yes, really it good. Is. So you guys, we'll, we will check that out. And thank you very much. Thanks so much. Appreciate right. you guys coming and your interest. Thank you. We appreciate thank it very you. much. Thanks, Thanks for coming sponge, in. Sponge cake and Twix. I want to see those bridges. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. See if I come <laughs> Love it. There you go. So we're gonna excuse ourselves. Thanks so much. All right. Have a good night. Good luck with your badges. Cheers. Thanks Thank so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Come on up. Yep. Time to reconvene our hearing. Peter, we went a little long in the long in the tooth there, but I'm sorry. oh, no problem. Okay. So we need to reopen our hearing, essentially. Reconvene. To reconvene. Yep. <clears throat> and we had our site visit uh, Saturday. last Saturday. Yep. <clears throat> and let's see. Now at this point, we already had all of our public comment and everything, mm -hmm. and we had actually a number of people there, which was mm -hmm. good. So they were able to great. walk yeah. through, yeah. And, answer any questions. It was a good time, I think, to see it firsthand, too. I think that makes a big difference. Yeah, it does. Because you can talk about it and see it in pictures, but it's not quite the same as actually being there. Um, <clears throat> and I think, uh, I don't know, do we, do we have any outstanding questions left after that, or? I don't think questions, if I could, Mr. Chair, mm. from the site visit, the, the way this process, because it is uh, a poultry processing, required input from the Department of Public Health locally, health okay. inspector locally, I want to say uh, a site visit uh, to the site, which is down off of Plumtree Road. And I, I'd like to give an impression, if I could. Mm. I thought that the um, the facility was a very um, ingenious. It was very well thought out. Yep. Uh, well, we're, we're talking about a converted shipping container made essentially food safe for the processing of animals. Yep. And uh, I, was, I was really impressed. And I want to say, Peter, I was... I was um, quite a piece of work. I really do wish you the best with that. Thank you. That, that said, there were some abutters at the site visit. Sherry, yourself, myself, Tom were there. We know the Board of Health has been through there and the health inspector has been through there. After our vote tonight, there's just the last piece, which is the state signing off on you. And then and then you're, you're ready to go. Right. There was yep. still some work you had to do on uh, some um, Holding tank. Holding tank yeah. Right? And that hopefully that coincides. You, you can get approval when that work is complete and be ready to just mm -hmm. rock and roll. That's the plan. Yep. Great. There's nothing this winter starting this spring. Great. Mm -hmm. So that said, again, I want to I uh, applaud uh, Peter's efforts and ingenuity in, in basically creating, if it had wheels, it would be a mobile site. That's right. You, you, know, you weren't that far off. It's a yeah, shipping container, but right? you could throw it on a trailer and Bottom go about your business. Bed. But yeah. uh, in this case here, it's stationary, and it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful addition to uh, the agricultural infrastructure in the, in the Pioneer Valley. I was going to say, because that's one thing that people don't often think about is the, the processing Where's part it of it. Right. Exactly. You know, you raise it, now you've got to bring it, and right. a lot of people have to bring them out of state and other places. So that's right. Definitely a big thing, and you would never know it's there. Right. Actually, that's, that's, that's another good point. It's exactly. another good point. Right. It's 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 a it's a container inside of an existing uh, structure, a pole yeah. barn, and it looks great. Yeah. So with that with that said, uh, a motion to grant uh, as requested the license for is it uh, Lesnicka? Lesnicka. Yes. Lesnicka. Peter Lesnicka's uh, poultry business on. Um, 82 Russell Street, uh, as has been applied for and inspected.
Well, the, it's 136 Russell Street. That was the lot number. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. The, you're right. It says lot number. Yep. 136 Russell. Thank you. Uh, I'll second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Two to Congratulations, zero. Peter. Sure, yes. Best of luck. Thank you, you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. It was an impressive facility. It was. I, I, that was. I thought that was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So next we have our minutes to approve. We've moved to big paper, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I know. that. <laughs> it's like, when do we go to this? We hold off on minutes until we have uh, Tom back. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Um, okay, and then we move on to our exciting update part of the evening. Um, the only update I had, we were going to have a personnel committee meeting, um, but we didn't have, between a loss of a member and um, some scheduling, we weren't able to get a quorum, so we've got another one scheduled for early January. So, and we'll have a little more stuff from the um, study by then too, so. <clears throat> I think that's all I got right now. Vice President, Mr. Chair, the Frontier Negotiations team had its first meeting, um, and it was an organizational meeting, it was mm -hmm. ground rules, everything seems to be on, on track. We set for meeting dates for four subsequent meetings where it'll be the direct negotiations with uh, each of the municipality, the administration, as well as the bargaining units for A and for C. Mm. Also, uh, the Frontier School Committee uh, had a public hearing for uh, the capital improvement plan, Tech Aid Plan, mm. plan and they've, they've had a couple of questions that came out and have asked for the working group, the four town working group and administration to revisit some of those. Okay. Um, that's a meeting that comes up in a week. Uh, also, we have, I think it's 120 North Main had ZBA meeting last week, and they have, mm -hmm. they have a conservation commission meeting this week regarding uh, the footprint, revised footprint, and location uh, being proposed. Mm -hmm. Along that same line, uh, the RDI, the developer, has come forward and is asking for an extension for closing uh, on the project with the town. Remember that we haven't sold anything yet. Mm, that's true. Right? There's yep. been no property transfer. It's still the town's that's property. Um, and I think they're asking for uh, January 1, 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And that allows them to uh, complete uh, any design deal with design exceptions, deal with any challenges. At the same time, puts them in the calendar, in the clock for grant rounds. Yep, so it keeps things rolling along. DHCD rounds are in July, and June and July, so yeah. be able to keep things important. moving along that way. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, Town Administrator update, Trey. It's, I know it's so quiet, there's usually not much going on. But yeah, yeah, I was wondering if we could. <laughs> <laughs> he said sarcastic. I wanted to <laughs> defer to Chris and ask him if he could maybe talk about the funding for PEG that's in, that huh? we're in jeopardy yes. of losing. Okay. Um, we'll have to switch hats. <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I've never done this before. Uh, uh, Get yourself live. Switch around here mm -hmm. and no, I can do this. You could just stand up in the chair and face that camera, yeah. right? <laughs> That's a I'll do this. a I'll lot do of this. emails flying around right. on the stand list serve as well, oh, yeah. so yeah. town administrators are aware and concerned. Mm -hmm. And I guess the deadline for comments was extended, so yeah. that's what I so, just want to be clear on. So, what happened, what's happening is the FCC, right. yeah. Wisdom, has decided <laughs> to change the rules regarding public access. Mm -hmm. Currently the way it works is everybody who has a cable subscription gets assessed a franchise fee. Mm -hmm. Right. The money gets collected, goes to the town, mm -hmm. we bill the town when it comes to us for yeah. operations. Well, the FCC wants to change the rules essentially to allow the cable companies to offset the cost of allowing access to the cable system against the money that would bid for the franchise fee. So basically, I don't know what it costs to get channel 15, channel 12, channel 23 up on Comcast. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much what they say it is. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but if this rule change goes through, 
it could very well wipe out, if not all of our funding, a significant portion of all the funding for all peg access stations in the United States. Right. Not just DEFCAP, but Greenfield, um, anybody, any public access station where these media companies are held mm -hmm. would be defunded, essentially. Hmm. To put more money in the pockets of the, uh, of the cable company. And it's something that they've been lobbying for for a while. Nobody ever thought it would happen because the Cable mm -hmm. Act of 84 pretty much pr protects mm -hmm. the mechanism. Right. Mm -hmm. So the problem is that this thing got trotted out with basically no explanation. Well, I mean, I didn't even know about it until Tom Hutchison right. from Conway contacted me and said, I went to this event, and guess what? And then I did some research and looked at what I found. Hmm. Um, there are access directors in this county, in this area, that don't have any idea what's coming. And if it does happen, it probably could happen this month. Um, was there a public comment period on it? It was a public comment period that started, actually, the, the initial approval yeah. was in September, which started the clock on a 60-day public comment Got period. it, yeah. By the hmm. time we all found out about it, sure. it was November the 1st, or That's... November the 2nd, and the, the public comment period was to end the 14th of November. Now they've extended it to the 14th of December. Mm -hmm. um, Mass Access, Northeast Regional uh, Alliance for Community Media. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these the advocacy organizations are a little late to the party, but they're on board now. Good. So what we're trying to do is get as many town officials as possible to run to the SEC and say, yep. not that they're going to listen necessarily, mm -hmm. but the hope is that we'll get a, a, a wide swath of people coming forward saying, don't take our public access. Sure. So, so what's uh, what's our esteemed uh, chair Edgy Pie? What's his um, take on why? I think it, it's this largely coming be done. from him. I think he's the one. This is like what's his um, justification? Oh, for justification it? Yeah. is that towns like yourselves take the money from cable franchise fees and use it for other stuff than cable access, which is just there's no fundamental. There's there may be individual towns that do that, but none in our towns. Mm -hmm. And I don't think many towns in Massachusetts do it. Right. Also, the feeling is that the the massive amount of money that is charged every month for that, I, I'm <laughs> facetious when I say this, yeah. um, is, is thought to be a hidden cost of cable that hmm. drives up artificially the cost of hmm. cable service. That's the argument. And the, other, the third argument, all of which are thin, but the third and the thinnest is that it'll somehow foster competition among cable companies. Like, Charters di dying to get in here. You know, well, that'd be one right. thing if there was actual competition rather than a government monopoly. Exactly. But the, the whole reason for the Cable Act of 84 is to allow these people to have essentially uh, a monopoly in a certain area. Yep, exactly. and, and in exchange for that, you have to provide X number of dollars for public access yep. and you have to exactly. provide channel space. And the cable companies always sort of did that. And, you know, it was never a problem until. Very recently, when people started cutting the cord, mm -hmm. people started cutting the cord. Cable companies lose money; they got to get that money back. We're talking about potentially twenty million or billion. I don't even know how much the number. Last number I hear, I hear different numbers all the time. But it's millions of dollars mm -hmm. that could be recouped by the cable companies just by getting the FCC to change the rules. Well, in that's, the that's one thing too. If you you try to cut the cord and say say it's Sunderland, for instance, <clears throat> you're used to a certain speed. So when you cut the cord, their pricing structure is conveniently structured so that it's basically going to cost you the exact same amount after you get rid of your cable television portion to maintain that same internet speed. So, exactly. so it's, it's, yeah. it's a shell game. It is what it is. It's a part of an effort by an administration to deregulate as much as they can. In this yeah. case, it really, I mean, for, for, for large cities, it's not as big a deal than mm -hmm. large medium markets. Mm -hmm. Right. But for towns like this, towns like Conway, Deerfield, Whitby, the ones I really care about, mm -hmm. you know, we're really one of the few outlets that gets these meetings, this information sure. out to people. And we've been breaking our butts, you know, over at FCAT to try and do as much as we can mm -hmm. to tell the story about this, this South County, sure. tell the story about what goes on here. That all that 300 stuff, that coverage, that was all FCAT. Yeah. And that was because... Speaking of the media, they just ran out of the room. Well, I mean, the report <laughs> knows about it. I've written yeah. a column about yeah. it. I mean, but... I mean, the, basically, it would end... It would end public access this. as we know it. Yep. And whether it would end completely for FCAT, I don't know. I won't know that until the first numbers come in. I can tell you that we have some money saved. We have a prudent reserve. That will go away. I figure if, if they cut all the funding today, we'd have about a year's worth of operating mm -hmm. expenses. Money to be able without to, a restructuring, without a restructure, without finding some you know underwriting is a possibility. Yep. We're trying to yep. increase that, but 
You're talking about $160,000 a year. We're not right. going to pull that out of these communities. It's sure. not going to happen. So, I mean, there's other ways to do it from a technology technology standpoint, but that's going to cost money yeah. for the equipment. Yeah. I mean, you know, if and, we're going to go and, and buy and the trike and casters and, and certainly stuff. Certainly your town, none of the towns that, I, that we cover have the money to be able to, to, to fund public access. Right. right. But I think, I want to believe it's a, it's a community service worth saving. There's got to be a way to do it. But the, hmm. the mechanism and the structure will have to change drastically. So for... Our support, right? We can have a correspondence to the FCC. To the FCC everybody. directly. Yeah. Yeah. And I sent, I don't know if I sent you the, the template. There's a I was template say, being sent out. There should be a link yeah. and everything, There's too. There's an agency template being sent out by, I forget the agency, um, but it's an organization that Tom is in touch with mm -hmm. that I sent to share. I sent to all the town administrators. Okay. We can basically you know, insert your name, yep. insert right. your titles, yep. and, and send it over. And you know, hopefully there'll be a I mean, now it's starting to perk. NPR is on it. Mm -hmm. um, there's other agencies, other news outlets that are on it. Good. But it's just one of those things where, it's public access is one of those things where if it's not there one day, it's like, well, what happens? Where do they right. go? Right. By then, it's too late. Right. Money gone, service is gone. So, hmm. Yeah, hmm. I'm, I'm justifiably concerned. So are my fellow directors. Yeah, I think I'm, everybody should be. I'm on the board of GCTV. They're really worried about it. Um, Gary Long, who's the president of the GCTV board, said and he's been in the access, involved in access since the 70s. He said this is the single greatest threat to peg access television in the history of the media. Uh, when Gary says something like that, I take it serious. Sure. And I think, yeah, and, and a lot of people don't even know what is peg access. Basically, it's like you're get, your community television is going to be shut off, basically. Yeah. When it comes and down to Essentially. Yep. I mean, there's, we can, we can, there's always ways to sort of having an online presence, a YouTube presence, but right. it's not without the same. an operating budget, there's right. nobody to cover right. that stuff. Right. And as much as I love you guys, I'm not working for you. <laughs> yeah, that's um, all right. But Except we're going to keep the boat afloat as long as we can, and hopefully okay. the FCC will. And also, the other thing is, you know, the Senate, as I understand it, a vote of the U.S. Senate could override an FCC rule. Mm -hmm. So Ed Markey's on this. I don't know if anybody else hmm. in the Senate is involved in it. And Mark, he was one of the congressmen who helped write the Cable Act of 84. Right. What's the EFF doing about this at all? Uh, the, the Electronic Frontier Foundation? They, they get a, a lot, they get heavily involved in a lot of lobbying I was say, with this, stuff around this, this the This doesn't FCC sound nearly as sexy as net neutrality. No, so. but they, they were heavily involved with that, though. I, I mean, mean, people think of access, I think of Wayne's World. Right. Think, you know, yeah. They, right. they think of, of meetings that don't have any sound. There, there are access stations in this state, in this country, they're doing a lot of really hard work mm -hmm. right. to, to bring government to people, mm -hmm. to bring culture to people. Mm -hmm. And I get really infuriated when I hear people say, well, it's, it's a big deal, it's just public access TV. What well, is a big deal? It's also part, like we were saying earlier with the Cubs Cups, it's part of the public historic yeah. record. Yeah. Exactly. And that will go away. <clears throat> well, it makes you wonder if that's not part of the motivation. I'm, well, not, uh, a, I'm not a sinister-minded well, person. I've, I've said before yeah, that, yep. that a lot of the voices of dissent that have come out of that have come out of access, that have mm -hmm. come out of 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 mediums that would not be allowed, it wouldn't allow you a voice on a network. Right, right. David Pacman's of the world, yep. the, the Amy Goodman's of the yep. world. Um, I wouldn't have a column in the recorder had not been for access. That's mm -hmm. how I got my column at the recorder because the recorder saw that show I was doing and said. Sure, I call for yeah. us. I mean, if there's a link that we can get up on the website too, and any information, yeah. I will know. send whatever yeah. I have. Because that would be great. Because uh, I know during uh, the net neutrality stuff, and mm -hmm. you were able to send out a link and then essentially just shoot something off with that right to the FCC. So. Any support we can get will be helpful. I don't know that it's going to make a difference. I'm hoping it will. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that cooler mm -hmm. heads prevail. Right. And they recognize that this is just one of those things that's just a bad idea. But a lot of bad ideas are coming out of Washington. Yes, they are. That's what scares me. So. Yeah. But thank you for yeah, allowing me to come through. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> An important topic. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we have our. Hey, anything else, Sherry? Uh, <coughs> well, we're continuing to work with Paragus to recover emails um, that were on the old server. Mm -hmm. Everything else is up and running. Uh, we received four or five quotes for the uh, IT grant project. Oh, good. Uh, so I'm reviewing those with the state IT department. Good. Uh, and we'll hopefully have a recommendation for our award within the next couple of weeks. And we're also working with FERCOG on an IT project, a feasibility 
um, study that's going to kick off under the DLTA program. What, what's the core of that one? Um, they're looking at a shared? couple. The first one is an assessment of existing infrastructure, and then the yep. second phase of that um, could be a regional server, network server. Okay. So as I get more hmm. information, I'll yeah, make sure to pass that along. Okay. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Lots of exciting things going on. So it's that behind the scenes work. Yes. So if I could, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, as I look at this list in front of us, yeah. uh, Sherry license holders, there are some that are are not, right, haven't received the renewal documents. I'll use uh, Golf Mart, for example. Uh, I'll use uh, under renewal doc, Vic Mike's Maze. So if these haven't been received, is it easier to keep a running list of things that we voted, or is it easier to vote them as a slate when this is complete? I know there's a there's a narrow window before the first of the year. Yeah, yeah we're going to put it on on the agenda for next week's meeting because we don't have everything in. Okay. Um, so if you want to hold, and well, hopefully next for the next meeting, mm -hmm. we'll have everything, and you can move it as a slate. If if it ha if it helps, the reason I, I raised the point, Mr. Chair, yeah. if it helps to expedite the next steps for the ones who are on time and on schedule, right. mm -hmm. we could we could vote those, and then we would only be revisiting what one, two, three, four, that would be remaining. Yeah, sure. yeah I think that's so a good idea. Yeah, that would okay. Be so if I could, Mr. Chair, you have in front of us uh, uh, renewal licensing, and I'll read the category and the names, and then we'll move what I what I read as the slate. Yep, sounds good. Uh, so we have for uh, renewal uh, for alcohol licenses, uh, Billy's Beverage, Blue Heron, Bridgeside Grill, that's a new owner, new manager, Bub's Barbecue, Demos, Goten of Japan, Again, the O's with a new owner, new manager. That happens with the right timing. Mm -hmm. Spirit Shop and Sunderland Corner Store. Under class, and these are these have been Board of Health inspected, fire inspected, taxes are paid. Uh, these are on-premise or off-premise as, as submitted. Uh, common VIT goes with all of these because you have to be able to sell. Right. Uh, there isn't a dance and entertainment at Blue Heron. There's dance entertainment at Bridgeside. And there's dance entertainment at the O's. Uh, entry on Sunday is only at the O's. Jukebox also is at the O's. So that's the, all the whole alcohol category. Under class two license, which is auto, uh, all states, uh, JR service, and Roy's Automotive, and all of their boxes are checked. That is building and fire, and taxes are paid. And then under non alcoholic common VIT license, uh, we have Frontier Pizza. We have Millstone Market with a new owner. Okay. We have Schmowski's Farm Stand, Subway, Sugarloaf Frosty, Sunderland Market, and Wild Roots Cafe and Market. And that's, excuse me, <clears throat> all, common uh, all common bits, uh, taxes paid, and board, of, sorry, building inspector and fire inspections complete. All right. Um, I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And we'll revisit um, any stragglers uh, yeah. next week. All right. That's good because that keeps that process rolling. Yeah. So you, so we don't instead, wait. Of, instead of 25, you're talking about four. Yeah. All right. So then there's room for a special town meeting. <clears throat> um, let's see. So what's our. What's the schedule on this one, Sherry? Looking at Monday, the 28th of January at 7 p.m. for the Sunderland at, at the Solon Sun. <laughs> I had Swamp Fields, I had, yeah. mashed up, all one word. <laughs> uh, Swamp Sunderfield. Yeah, exactly. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Need some dinner. Um, so let me try this again. We're shooting for a special town meeting Monday, January 28th, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Sunderland Elementary School, 1 Swampfield Drive, Sunderland. And articles for that will be due by Monday, December 10th. And we will be signing a warrant for that by Monday, January, or on Monday, January 9th. And then we would have a meeting with the Finance Committee on January 14th. And these are all 2019 dates, folks. Yes, that's coming up. Yes, it is. And the warrant would have to be posted by 
Thursday, January 10th. And then the last day to register to vote for the special town meeting would be Saturday, January 19th. And right now we have just two items so far. Uh, or oh, yeah. no. ten, do we have, we have ten? ten? Oh, no, we do. Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So some of these, so some of these are going to be some money articles. Some of them are yep. going to be <coughs> permanent easements. Some of them are regulation change. It's sort it's of like a little smatter. A whole bunch. A little bit of everything. Yeah, a little bit I was of gonna say, do we have, yeah. zoning. Do we have any other things that are queued up to get on besides these, or um, anything? I'm working on a couple of things. So. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. So Sherry, tonight we would be announcing the date of the special town meeting. Correct. We'll be opening the warrant. Or should we open the warrant? Would you rather us wait and open the warrant? We have to. No, yeah. yeah okay. So move to move to that. move to set a special town meeting date Monday, January twenty eighth, two thousand nineteen, at seven p.m. at the elementary school, as well as open a special town meeting warrant. Uh, again, the warrant itself will be closed uh, Monday, December tenth. They're only open for seven days. Right. <clears throat> and that that leads into our next meeting will be Monday, December tenth. Right. So, um, I second that. <coughs> Excuse me. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, pardon me. I have this terrible cold that just doesn't go away. <coughs> is hanging on when the cough is terrible. All right. So that covers our. As so we kick off the um, special town meeting process, that will get us warmed up for the April one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that other and one? Next one, we're revisiting our free cash guideline, and we'll be getting that certified soon, right? Right. Um. So last year, um, we talked about revisiting the free cash allocation mm -hmm. guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, when these guidelines were first established, um, we didn't have the capital stabilization override in place. Yep. Right. Yeah. Um, and so since that time, we have a capital stabilization um, override. Mm -hmm. So there was some thought about maybe um, reallocating funds to other areas. So the way the guidelines are set up, 30% heads the operating budget. Uh, some percentage goes to stabilization, 30% goes to capital stabilization, and then 5% uh, remaining. We want to move forward at least 100,000. And we had to look at that number too. So reallocating the free cash guidelines isn't necessarily just removing one from a category. It's looking at it's how it's been used successfully <clears throat> and right. what makes sense to apply it accordingly. As our, as our operating budgets and our reserves have, have grown, and they haven't grown substantially, but we may find that in the discussion uh, with the financial team or with the finance committee, that that use of free cash generated to move forward, that $100,000 might actually be too low. And, and I think I think this is something that we have to expect to periodically revisit yeah. anyway. Yeah. Just yeah. To, yeah. And we had the two hundred thousand dollar override right. last year too. Right. So how is all of that sure going to play into you know right. the future? At the personnel committee meeting, that didn't happen. Right. Uh, we discussed maybe asking for um, some type of allocation mm -hmm. um, for future HR needs, um, mm -hmm. not uh, just increases in salaries and colas and those things but mm -hmm. programs and ways that we can be more efficient um, like the online permitting and just looking at um, other hr related mm -hmm. um, things to improve efficiency yeah because kind of you know just from the hr side you know we kind of know okay we have x amount in personnel expenses that are there and kind of like we've tried to do with other things can we try to allocate some of that to take out the noise of that you know, so that we're not getting hammered with. Well, remember, whatever allocation we talk about with the use of free cash, there's no guarantee. There's, there's no guarantee that it's available next, next year. Exactly. So using free cash to do anything that is a new recurring expense is a trap. Yep. Just That's plain true. and simple. Well, should we mm. revisit the right. OPEB? That's another one. Yeah. OPEB's yeah. another Funding. one. OPEB. Should take, we maybe take that piece off and make that a recurring? Yeah. That's a good point. Yep. So just some things to think about yep. um, as we're Especially getting ready OPEB for the stuff. new budget right. season. No, I think OPEB's a really, really creative idea. Again, the opportunity. I think the state did it a number of years ago with the use of the rainy, with the use of 
capital gains feeding semi-directly to the stabilization fund, rainy day fund, they call yeah. it. Yeah. And you know they were using, they were using um, for a long time capital gains and funding big elements of the operating budget increases in Medicare Medicaid, and it, it, they got busted. It just popped one year. It's like, we don't have any capital gains. And you built all the expenses in. And guess what? Yeah, Busted. Nothing there. So I don't. I absolutely would be resistant about moving along that line with free cash. Yeah. So again, free cash we need to generate. Free cash we need to allocate. Mm-hmm. But we can't count on it year on year well, on year on year. We've seen it go up and down. Right. Yeah. But I think it's, it is absolutely in time to, to revisit. And I'm sure I'm glad you brought this up. We'll be talking about this much more in the future. Oh, yeah, put it on the agenda for the yeah. financial yeah. management yeah. team meeting. I like the, I like the old finance idea. committee. Yeah. Yeah, in the next meeting. Yeah, I think. The right. Yep. So you need to start looking at it and thinking about it too. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, do we have any public comments tonight? We have hey, really Steve. Well, How are you? <laughs> I, I, I saw a face out there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, how you doing? All right. Uh, just a little bit of news on Sugar Bush. Oh. Uh, I think the last time I was here, I talked to you that we received a request to extend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For them to uh, uh, extend the expiration date, which is February March. or March, March of yeah. 2019, mm-hmm. depending on whose interpretation you go with. Uh, the board had to, Excuse had to meet. Uh, we were required to. We received a notice of uh, a request to extend the expiration date as a insubstantial change. Mm-hmm. So that triggered that the board met, mm-hmm. uh, had to meet, and we met uh, last Thursday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talked to Jay about it beforehand, and he said, unfortunately, there's really we don't have uh, any legal stands or any grounds to deny it. So Steve, if I could, Mr. Chair, yeah. when you talk about insubstantial, this is a request to extend, but it's not changing fundamentally the workings of the of, right. the, of the actual application. It's, it, it, it doesn't affect the project yeah. at all. It's not like they're adding, you know, 10 more units right. or right. You know, anything that could be considered a, a, a substantial change. Got it. But I mean, when, when they, uh, they made a change and they re- reduced it by about 10%. That was even, we, we, and the board did call that a substantial change that triggered hearings and that really led up to uh, the agreement that we have now. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, the board was very happy about it. Uh, uh, we, you know, we, so I sort of went off on, mm-hmm. <laughs> on them and said, Why? Hey, you know, because I, you know, I, quite, quite frankly, I, I thought that. Uh, you know, three years from issuance of a comprehensive permit to starting construction it sounds like a, a lot of time. I mean, that, that and I, I thought at least the first 18 months nothing was happening. Correct. We were asking each other, like, yeah. what's going on? What's going is this on? their second extension, too? No, this is their Probably first. the course the, of the project? It's the first extension. The project is, yeah. in, okay. there's, there's okay. sorted history, yeah. but yeah. There, there's, I don't yeah, uh, but it's, it, in terms of, uh, you know, Back in 2016, mm-hmm. they actually got their comprehensive permit. Right. It was a negotiation between both parties, and the mm-hmm. HAC approved it. So, uh, but that contained a provision that they had three years to get at least uh, a minimum of one foundation of one primary building yeah, in the ground. Right yeah. And they came to the, came to the opinion that they weren't going to be able to make it. Interesting. Could I ask a question, yeah, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Steve, um, maybe, maybe it's this. This is a, a question for beyond this particular room. But do these do these uh, comprehensive permits just have a perpetual life? If I if I had twenty one million dollars, could I could I go and buy the permit and simply start all over again? Uh, I mean. I've, it, I, I don't know, but I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking about the DHCDs bailey. Maybe that's in, in their in their wheelhouse, but yeah. I have to say, from from someone who's been intimate with respect to getting the project even to to this point, and I'm not advocating for it. I never advocated for it, but at some point, doesn't it have a life cycle that's more than just the economics, right? You think so? You, the, the developer could simply pull out and go, "Listen, I'm done. 
I'm, I've had enough. And you see a for sale sign show up on the property. But if the state affords, state awards through the DHCD process, through the 40B process, you know, if, if nothing happens in 15 more years, is it another extension? I, I, str I personally struggle with that. Is there a lifespan to this? Yeah, is there, yep. is there a sunset clause to the permit? You know, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I know, I know the ZBA is something that's something not necessarily enforceable because, again, like I'm not economics drive some of that. But eventually, you know, it's either put up or shut up. Right. I mean, there's certainly making the effort I, I and from, I actually from applaud what that. we can see yeah. I mean and they certainly I mean Scott continually tells us how much money they've had to invest in this and what it's cost them I said good cost, cost of doing business right it's exactly right yeah. and you know because you know they and <coughs> their, their delay mm -hmm. uh, cost them money right <coughs> as 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 described by the North Amherst projects times two because you know that though they they got their permit and they were in the ground within six months. Yeah. Months or months because that's real money. Well, yeah, but it cost them a, you know cost them a pretty penny to it. But I it, agree. It, it can be done. Yep. And, uh, so I just I, I mean I wrote a, I, I wrote them a letter, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, you know, verifying the board's decision mm -hmm. and there's a copy of it in your, in your mailbox okay. I just wanted to let you know because I know I popped in here yeah. before to talk about it. Well I thank both you as the chair as well as the ZBA for its for its thoughtful work. Um, it's not always the easiest to to weed mm -hmm. to wade through that that amount of information and work on what's best for the town, the community itself, outside of the zoning planning uh, constraints and, and uh, rules that were established by town meeting. But you guys have done just, ad, not just admirable, really, really exquisite work to try to keep it in the best interest of the town and the developer. And mm -hmm. we've got to make sure that understand there's two, two sides to this. There's, uh, there's a couple other things. There's another letter uh, that's in your mailbox that has to do with uh, uh, Mass DOT uh, took a look at their driveway design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the requirements of the comprehensive permit was yep. that they had to get Mass DOP oh, yeah. approval. Oh, approval. Okay. Uh, so they had to make a minor change. Uh, they had designed a 34 foot wide mm -hmm. mouth. Yep. Uh, so, for lack of better words, that where the driveway where it flares out. Yep. The, uh, yeah. uh, Mass DOT made a change that back to 24 mm -hmm. because that's their standard mm -hmm. and there was another change about moving the stop bar they had the stop bar right at the highway's edge it had to be backed up 10 feet was, uh, it, was there tension with the 34 feet and the fire chief for apparatus because uh, it is one way in uh yeah well there's an emergency way in and there's a, there's apparently access there okay. as well mm -hmm. uh, Nielsen is going to run it. Is, is going to run that yeah. by the, the fire chief. Okay. Again. I think about tension from road design to you know you can have as we've talked about at North Main Street standard yeah. design. Yeah, right? exactly. It's like well, it's this wide. No, it's this wide. We can get the exception for like this wide. Then the fire chief rolls and it goes. Well, how do I put a truck? Yeah, in exactly. It? I can't <laughs> fit now. Right. right. So, so. Okay. Uh, I just, I, so there's a copy of that letter as well. Uh, and there is one other issue. Uh, the the comprehensive permit requires that the board uh, put in a request for a reduction of speed limit mm -hmm. in that area. Okay. Currently, it's a 50 mile an hour speed limit there. Oh, well, on 116 there. Yeah, yeah. in that area. Uh, and there is, I mean, there's going to be bus stops on both sides of the road. Yep. There's going to yep. be a pedestrian crossing. Mm, you need to have some flashing power. lights, but no traffic light. Uh, and so, uh, so that when you say the board, it's a request of the board of selectmen to the DOT. Uh, no, actually, it's, it's, it's required of the zoning ZBA. board. ZBA, okay. And uh, we uh, we discussed it and we voted on it. And I'm still waiting. For, um, Scott's supposed to get me the person that I got to address this letter to. Got it. But uh, I just wanted to to let you know what the board decided on was uh, we were requesting. Not, doesn't mean we're going to get it yep. from the DOT, but we're requesting that the speed limit be reduced to 40 miles an hour okay. through there. Uh, our, our, our reasoning being uh, it's consistent with 
the 40 miles an hour that it is I was uh, right across from Cliffside. Yeah, you know, exactly. There. Okay. Right. Even though yeah. it's a traffic light. I mean, I mean, it's, and it's we've we've had accidents there. We've had fatalities there. Right. Uh, you know, we we <clears throat> thought that you know, 35 was probably pushing it. I'm uh, considering it's yeah. it's 50 miles an hour for quite a way. Sure. Straight. Almost, almost from yeah, the, exactly. the traffic light mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in in Amherst. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we got to let you know that we, we thought 40 miles an hour would be true. You know, you'll see another letter probably right. copy in your mailbox that uh, copy you on whenever. That makes sense, though, given what, what the proposal is there and then with the bus traffic and everything. You have, you have places of business, places of worship. Exactly. Plus, now, you know, fair, fair amount, a fair amount of density. Yeah. I, I, it, it, it concerns me because mm -hmm. I guess they're going to have a uh, uh, flashing light with a put a pedestrian activated oh. push button. Yeah. I just you know. It's crying for a pedestrian bridge. It's quite, well, a pedestrian <laughs> bridge would have been terrific. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or a traffic light. Yeah. I mean, right. yeah. we, we, Straight we, up we went around light. in circles there, and we just they, they were they were it wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I just, even getting them to slow down to 40 miles an hour there, I mean, that, it's going to take a long time. I mean, there's, you know, people are used to smoking all the way down there. It's tough getting them to go down to 40 miles an hour. Right, and then another stretch. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, maybe we look at um, another one of those, the, like we've got down there with the speed with your, yeah. the sign with your speed on it. Yeah. Yeah, um, your your speed is you know that, that's that's very effective. Yeah. You, it you, it you is. Come popping in there and you you say whoa, no forty eight. Like, yeah. Uh, and I was reading realize. about those for the other locations we were talking mm -hmm. about on North Main Street, and those also track. Oh, how fun! The units, the, the cars that go through there, so we would essentially have our own traffic counting mm -hmm. thing going on. Oh, yeah. So that's something we got to talk to George about, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. uh, so interesting because that would also give us another point of data to compare against. Mm -hmm claimed numbers and things like that right. so did uh, RDI come to your last meeting who uh, 120 North Main no uh, that we got that that's Thursday <clears throat> this yeah. Thursday okay. okay got it that's our uh, we're continuing the hearing got it thank you I appreciate the update any concern with the fact that sugar bush is being carved out into two pieces now there was a little bit, but you know, it was written into the uh, agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was it was going to be the source of water for the project. Right. Uh, and apparently, uh, and I guess this is not just Scott's boastings. Uh, that is a, a a very good source of water, and that other municipalities, sure. including someone, yep. is, is actually interested in uh, perhaps sourcing water from from that site. So. Begs the question about the economics, doesn't it? Hmm. Well, I get it. Well, nothing simple about that project. No, no, no. There's nothing simple about it at all. And again, I really value the work that the ZBA and, and you, as a chair, have done on that. Greatly appreciated. We talk about volunteer and other boards yeah, and exactly people working right. together in hours town. Hours and That's hours what? and hours and hours and meetings and years oh. you know, of work. I'm a, oh. We've Ways had, back. We've had a, a flurry of meetings, and we had a, uh, you know, Hollis has joined the board. <laughs> he didn't know what he was getting into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank I mean, Brock joined the board, but I mean, Brock's eyes were wide open. So yeah, right, yeah, right, right. right. Was too surprised. Interesting. <clears throat> Interesting. Well, thanks so much, Steve. Appreciate oh, it. Right. Thanks. That's, that's Appreciate the update. Yeah. Yeah. And it, well, yeah. yeah. It's good so other folks can see what's going on too, because people wonder what's up. Yeah. <coughs> right. Exactly right. Great. All right. Thanks. See you Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. <clears throat> I didn't want to yeah. talk in confidence. Okay. okay. But I can help it. Um, I believe that concludes the remainder of our regularly scheduled program nice. for this evening. <laughs> so our next meeting will be next Monday, December 10th. Um, and we'll be kicking off the next step of our special town meeting at that one as well. So, 
Um, you have a motion? Uh, we, we, would be, we would be remiss, Excuse Mr. Chair, tonight if we didn't recognize Excuse that the 41st President of the United States. Mm. That is true. Is currently lying in state in Washington. Yes, our condolences go out to the Bush family and everything. And regardless of what party you uh, mm -hmm. affiliate yourself with, I think you can agree that he uh, has dedicated a, a good chunk of his life to a lot of different aspects of public service. Sure. So. It's also one of those milestones where it is the it is uh, the last uh, president of, of the World War II generation, That's and true. it's uh, it's now ours. Just completely mess up. Well put. <coughs> and um, I think one of the things I've seen noted is uh, his <coughs> service and humility in sure. his job. Sure, couldn't agree more. You had, you had just quotes just, like you know a uh, thousand points of light. Uh, caring, uh, the genteel nature and the, the wonderful power of America, and uh, we have a president now who talks about you know carnage. Yes, so there's a marked contrast in leadership styles, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. <coughs> Motion to adjourn. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.